Well, I went to the Air Force on uh, December the 10th, 1941. It was three days after Pearl Harbor. And I had quite a bit of flying time before I went in, so I went through cadet school. And we uh, graduated in uh, November of uh, 42, and shortly thereafter I was overseas. Ended up in England in the 8th Air Force as a pilot on B-17s. Uh, I survived 29 missions in combat and uh, came back on home. And when I was released back to civilian status, I was fortunate enough to get a job with United Airlines. And I stayed with them for 35 years until I reached the mandatory retirement date of age 60. Now, I started flying when I was 16 and started writing in my logbook and closed it out just uh, the other day. At, uh, after 59 years of flying, I ended up with 30,000 plus hours of flight time. The, uh, the one and only sighting that I had was in uh, March of uh, 1977. And I was flying a DC-10. This is what it looks like uh, on a flight from San Francisco to nonstop to Boston. And it was United Flight 94. The uh, sighting that I had was um, in March of 1977. And I was flying a, a, a flight from San Francisco to Boston, the DC-10. And we were about halfway between Buffalo and Albany at 37,000 feet. Um, cloud cover underneath, dark night, when uh, all of a sudden the airplane started, it was on autopilot. <clears throat> the airplane started at about a 15 degree bank, turned to the left. And of course, I looked out the window to automatically, that's what you do when the airplane starts to turn. And I saw this brilliant light off. And it's hard to tell exactly how far out it is, but it was very, very bright. And the first officer saw it. And the second officer got out of his seat, and took a look. And uh, that's when the air traffic control in, in Boston wanted to know what was happening. So, uh, we, we told them we'd, when we figured it out, well, we'd, we'd give them a, a call. And uh, about that time, the uh, first officer hit the auto, autopilot release button and went back to manual control. And as I was looking out the window, why the, this, this thing that we had vision, this thing that we saw, disappeared back towards the left of the airplane and to our rear at a very rapid rate. The whole event took place probably, probably less than three minutes or so. So uh, air traffic control said, okay, uh, 994, uh, you're now cleared direct to Albany on into Boston, J94, and so forth. The uh, airplane was flying using the first officer's autopilot, which is connected to the captain's compass, which is out in the left wing tip of the airplane, and apparently, for some reason or other, the magnetic force was interrupted to cause the aircraft to veer off course because it's, it's hooked up to the compass. All three compasses were giving different readings, which is very unusual. So what we gathered was it was an a enormous magnetic force in whatever that ball was that we saw out there, that, that white light. After we uh, turned the, the uh, autopilot off and the first officer straightened out the airplane and they, we were advised to proceed direct to Albany, we could see Albany up ahead of us about 75 miles or so in the bright lights from the city. And the magnetic interference that had been working, it made the, the compasses uh, all different uh, readings on it all returned to normal after we had re you know, leveled off and started back again. And, and the, the object had disappeared away from us. So everything returned to a normal state. It was very, it was round, very, very bright light. Uh, it's hard to describe the intensity of it because it was 
I've said before that the, in, the intensity of a flash bulb, the old fashioned flash bulbs, but it didn't light up the inside of the airplane. It was just a white, white, bright light round. There was no danger involved that we could see. Uh, it, uh, it took off and went back and disappeared out of sight. It, uh, it didn't try to make any attack on us or anything like that. Well, one thing that the, uh, the co-pilot said, and this has to go into your records, he looked out the window across the cockpit at it and he says, oh, I can hardly wait till I get home and tell my sons about this. He says, my mother had a sighting when she was a young lady over in, in Europe, but no one would believe her about the, about the sighting. And that was his comment on it. After, well, let's see, it was about October, I guess, uh, my boss and I were standing in a duck blind up by Calusa, and it was a beautiful day and the ducks weren't flying, and I uh, was just there and I thought, well, I'll tell him about this. So I did. I told him about the incident. And uh, that's when he said that he was sorry that, that I said, had uh, mentioned that because uh, at that time, um, they weren't accepting the fact that there were the possibility of anything like that to be seen. And uh, that the pilots that had seen things and talked about it, some of them were let go. Some of them released in their flying and uh, treated as nutcases and things like that. So uh, that was the last I said of it for many, many years. The companies don't give you the message, but what they did to the first ones that did have sightings uh, takes the case along. Don't, don't talk about it. They have told me of their incidents and their sightings and then when it happened, and one especially was a sighting back on the East Coast, and he saw this thing for a long time, something like about 18 minutes it was in view. And when he reported it to his boss, it was a different airline, not United Airlines. They investigated it and the government said, well, that's swamp gas at 18,000 feet doing 250 knots, swamp gas. No one wanted to really admit that there might possibly be something there. People don't want to admit the possibility that there are other entities out there that might come down to be seen here. Uh, they don't want to admit it at all. The military seems to be the one that doesn't want to admit anything. And of course, our government. Well, I talked to the first officer about this uh, some years back, and he made it very plain to me that he didn't want to take any part in, in any things such as this, the taping or, or even relating to it. And I did mention previously that uh, the second officer, who is now flying as a captain, had my son on board as his first officer in just about the same position. And he said, many years ago I was flying with your dad and we had a sighting right about here. Did your dad ever talk to you about it? So finally, after all of these years, he admitted, admitted to someone that he did have this sighting. But the, the co-pilot uh, he just divorced himself from the incident completely.